Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. Happy, happy new year. Of course, I am super excited. And I just want you to know that expect for me to be talking about the revival. Because that's what I'm supposed to be talking about. Y'all, I'm so excited about the show. Yesterday, I officially launched the campaign for the revival. I have so many different ideas about the way I want to promote this show. Because that's what it's all about, right? Um, I announced on yesterday, if you purchase your ticket and you were the first 10 people, you will get a free prize. I mean, instantly I had people like ordering their tickets online. So of course they're getting shipped out today. So y'all can expect to get y'all in use within the next day or so. So of course I'm super excited about that. This is what the lanyards look like. Yes, you do wear them around your neck or whatever during the show. It is a VIP lanyard. Um, if you have never been to a PPG event, if you've never been to an event hosted by me, ask somebody. Ask somebody, have they ever been to a PPG show? Have they ever been to anything that Sharonda Parker put together and it wasn't live? Ask somebody. Ask around the city. Ask your mama. Because guess what? 15 years ago when I started throwing shows, your mom was coming. Now you grown. Now you can come. Ask somebody. If you're trying to celebrate your birthday in February, you need to come see me. If you're celebrating Bachelorette, you need to come see me. If you're celebrating a breakup or divorce, you need to come see me. You're supposed to be at the revival. You're supposed to be there. And guess what? Once you experience the revival, I'm not even worried about it. You're going to come to March Madness. You're going to come to March Madness. I already know this. This is how this goes. So, y'all, I'm super excited about the show. I'm super hyped up. Of course, y'all been bucking me up along with my man, my man, my man. Um, <coughs> I feel like everything that I ever started doing as far as this industry goes, the adult industry, it all started with... Oh, I'm just going to do it and see, you know, how I like it. Um, When I got into the adult industry, it was literally because I was supplementing my income. It had nothing to do with, I thought it was my purpose or my passion. I never thought that. <coughs> Excuse me. Once I got in the industry, I realized what the need was for this industry. Then I realized, because I've always been a person in my personal life. I love history, I love documenting things, and I love writing and giving my own interpretation. That's just who I am as an individual. When I got in this industry and I started researching the problems and different things that people go through in relationships and uh, sexual issues and all of this kind of stuff, I literally found myself walking into my purpose. So this was always bigger than selling sex toys to me once I realized that there was a place for me in this adult industry, right? And then over the years, it started to evolve. Uh, my ex-husband and I, we wrote a book over 10 years ago, Cyber Sex. It was questions and answers, right? Even then, I never considered myself to be an author. That process and that project was so tedious I was like, I don't ever want to write another book again. Seriously. Um, because I had an expectation for editing. I had certain expectations, right? Um, again, I was like, okay, been there, done that, as far as the book is concerned. Then people started asking, you need to write a memoir. We want to know about you. We want to hear the Sharonda Parker story, you know. I considered that. I did. I was like, well, I could... But at the same time, it wasn't necessarily something that that set me on fire to write a story about me and who I am. Because at that time, and even right now, I still feel like I haven't done enough. Even though I've done a lot, right? I still felt like I hadn't done enough. Um, so then, of course, I started doing, last year, started doing story time. New man, new experiences. I love to share uh, my life with my followers. Um... And with his permission, he was okay with me sharing. But at this point in time, nobody knew who he was. 
Nobody knew who he was. He was just this mystery man that was dragging me up under the water and just doing all kind of stuff for AT. Um, even then, I had no idea that our relationship would turn into something so serious. Um, to the point where people would actually end up finding out who he was. Um, and I said, well, instead of doing the videos, let me transition into just writing the stories. Because these were videos that I started off doing at the beginning of the year last year. When I was going through all my pictures and videos and stuff. I was looking at all of the old videos where people would literally be tuning in at night for story time because they wanted to hear what the daddy dom had did to me next, right? <laughs> um, And I was like, you know what? Let me transition this and start writing about it because what I realized was people would tune in, people would miss it, but I felt like if I wrote about it, then eventually it'll come up on the timeline and people will be able to see it or whatever. By me writing it, and I'm just trying to show you the way things work, right? By me writing about it, it got the attention of a producer, right? And he brought me in to help write for his project. Again, I don't, cons I never considered myself to be a writer, right? But I really enjoyed writing the short stories. And I still do enjoy writing the short stories. Um... Doing the vision board party, well, not party, but it was a couple's vision board. I guess I'm so used to saying vision board party because it's always a big group of people. But when Daddy and I were doing the vision boards, the one thing that he pointed out, he was like, I want to see you writing more in 2024. And I was like, you really feel like my writing is good? Because I feel like I just write. And it's an outlet. Um, I enjoy it, you know. But it's more of a hobby. I looked at it like more of a hobby for me, right? And then he was like, you know, I really feel like your writing will take you places or whatever. And I was like, well, maybe I need to get serious about my writing. And of course, I was talking to the ladies in my group and I was telling them what he had said. And they were like, nah, ain't he like, you really need to maybe consider, maybe if you don't want to write a whole book, maybe consider doing a collection of short stories. Piper Harris told me that. And again, I'm willing to give credit where it's due because sometimes my mind is just not thinking in, in certain directions, right? And I was like, you know what? A collection of short stories is doable because that's what I enjoy writing, short stories. Not necessarily wanting to create a whole book with a storyline, but I like to be able to get in there, give you the scene, give you what's going on, get in and get out of there. That's that's the way I enjoy writing. Um. So last night, I didn't even put a title to this one. Um, I wrote about the jacuzzi sex scene that I had experienced on New Year's Eve. I wrote about it. Most of the stuff that I write about is things that I have experienced. Or it may be a collection of things that I've experienced over a period of time. Or I may take one thing that happened in one scene or something that we did and combine it with something else that happened. They may not have happened at the same time, but when I write the short story, I can put it together. Or I may even just take one one phrase that daddy may say or something that just happened uh, while we were having sex. And I will take that one thing and I will build on it, right? Um, so, um, the short stories come from a place. Because I don't want you to think that they don't come. I don't want you to think that all of this is just being made up in my mind. No, it comes from a real place. And I just basically take it and I build up on it. Um, so I released last night, part one and part two on Instagram. On Facebook, I released the whole story. And you all gave me back some great feedback. And I just want to say thank you for continuing to encourage me in my walk, in my journey. Because, you know, I always feel like there's so much more for me to do. Um, you know, it's it's... Outside of selling toys and stuff like that. And that's the one thing that, that daddy was talking to me about was residual income. Um, to get paid from it over and over again. And of course I understand that. Because I've been doing this a long time. That's the way I get paid off of my educational videos. With the oral sex training and the writing and the squirting. and all, That's all residual income. Um, but 
he really planted the seed about creating more streams of residual income. So guess what? I'm always teachable. I'm, I'm never the smartest person in the room, right? I'm always willing to listen and take things into consideration. So in 2024, I will take my writing a lot more serious. And that will be the new thing that I work on. That will be the new baby that I start birthing in 2024, okay? Um, of course, I'm going to still be selling my novelties. I'm going to be making my baskets. I'm going to be hosting shows. And let me say this about hosting shows because I think sometimes when I give y'all my booking fee, y'all get a little turned off. Y'all can't expect me to come out there and do a fun party for next to nothing. I know who I am. I know my education background. I know how much knowledge I have about this industry. And I know I'm one hell of a host. This is what I know. You're reaching out to me because you've been heard, right? And I understand that I'm not in everybody's budget. I get that. Um, but let me say this. I don't feel like my booking fee is unreasonable. Especially when you look at the deposit. And then you look at when you pay your balance off, right? And my thing is, if you can't afford that, you might have to ask yourself, should you be throwing this type of party? Well, you're trying to invite somebody like me. Because normally when people envision a party, they envision it being epic. And I want this person and I want this done. And a lot of times y'all will spend the money on decoration, balloon, arches, and all of that kind of stuff. And you spend money on the look of the party. But when it comes time to spend money on the host to come and turn that bitch all the way up for you. It's kind of like, oh yeah, that's kind of high. When all them fucking balloon arches and shit is what's high. Because that ain't that ain't the good time. I'm the good time. And see, not only am I coming with who I am, I'm coming educating you. I'm coming playing games. And I'm bringing the prizes. So all you got to do is get your people there. That's literally all you got to do. And you have entertainment. If you want to book a strip or something like that, great. We're all adult entertainers, right? But at the end of the day, I'm normally the warm-up before the stripper. I'm normally the person that's going to set it off before the stripper come, right? And let me tell you, I'm so confident in the way that I host. I will show you such a good damn time till you won't even need a stripper. Seriously. And this is what I know, right? So, just understand that I don't take it personal when you all inquire and then it's just like... Oh, yeah, they say don't worry about it. They're going to look for somebody else. You're not going to get another me. I'm confident in that. You won't get another me. I was God gave me this personality. I got the life experience. I got the knowledge. I know how to make that thing thing. I know how to make that pussy turn up. That pussy going to throw a party all by itself when I get through. But I'm, I'm just that confident in me. Seriously, right? So, with that being said, book me for your fun party. If you bought that life. Only if you bought that life. If you're looking for something a little mild and low-key, go with the people who just starting out this, you know, can do it for next to nothing. But when I show up to do a fun party, I got to at least be able to pay my light bill. My light bill ranges between $200 and $250 a month. I got to at least be able to pay my light bill when I go show up to do a party. I got to be able to pay a bill and not a partial bill. I got to be able to, I got to pay a bill. Okay? All right. Y'all be blessed. You all enjoy your day. I'm looking forward. Hey, don't forget the lanyards are ready. Um, the table seat four. If you have a group of four and you want me to, and you want to get an actual table, I have lanyards that are set aside just for a table. So if you're going to reserve a table, meaning that all four of y'all going to buy it together so that y'all can sit together at the table, let me know. And I can actually bring those languages to you. I have a roster just for tables. Okay? All right.